Okay, so now we finally get to delve into true biochemistry. We can almost think of those first four chunks as um, background into the building blocks of what we need in order to understand the biochemistry we're going to be discussing. Uh, obviously, it all centered around water, uh, but we just really needed to get our foot securely placed in the foundation of what we're going to be building off of. I like to think of this lecture that we're about to start now as the first real biochemistry lecture. Again, it'll be largely review and contain things that you've heard before, but we're also likely to go into more depth in certain issues that you've gone into in other classes. We'll be talking for the next three chunks, this is going to be an ABC chunk series, uh, about amino acids and peptides, the building blocks of proteins and how proteins are made. This is chapter three from your textbook. This first chunk will be talking about the three-dimensional structure of the building blocks of proteins, which are called amino acids. And then the B and C chunks to come after will discuss how amino acid side chains are characterized and named and their importance. We'll talk about different types, biochemical types of amino acids. We'll discuss the nuances of the peptide bond and talk about polypeptide chains, or in fact, of course, proteins. We'll end with a short discussion on small functional polypeptides, molecules that are made up of just a few amino acids, and we'll discuss some of the important physiological roles that those play. As many of you have probably heard me say already, and as all of you will hear me say many times again during the course of this uh, course that we're taking here, life is alive due to proteins. Proteins do it all. Life exists because proteins exist. Proteins are the machines that do all of the work of life. They are the structural scaffolding on which life is physically built. They are the pulleys and simple machines that allow us to move. And without sounding melodramatic, very truly, proteins are the magic that makes life, which is itself a magical process, possible. So we need to understand proteins. And as I said when we went over the course and the syllabus on the first day, uh, although this course is called biochemistry, it might as well be called proteins. That's really what this course is. It's nothing more than a course on proteins. If we're going to understand proteins and how they work, we must first have a very solid foundation on what they're made up of, how proteins are built. So that's what we're doing here. Proteins are chains of amino acids, and we can liken this to words just as words are chains of single letters. Proteins are chains of single amino acids. Just because you've used one letter in a word doesn't mean you can't use it again. Just because a protein has an amino acid doesn't mean it can't have that amino acid elsewhere in its protein chain. Letters are the simplest subunits of words, and so amino acids are, very succinctly, the simplest subunits of proteins. And so to understand proteins, let's first understand their subunits, amino acids. There are 20 amino acids that are found in the proteins of all living things in this world, and that's it. 20 amino acids. Think of all the diversity of life that you're aware of, all of the trillions of proteins that are made by living things, and all of them use nothing more than the 20 amino acids we'll be discussing in this lecture series. But if you think about it, 20 is actually a lot. Our English language alphabet has 26 characters in it, letters A through Z, and think of all the words that we can make using nothing more than those 26 letters. And so it works very much the same way with proteins. We can make billions of different proteins by changing the combination of amino acids that we include. So what we can vary is the length of proteins, different numbers of amino acids that we have in there, and the sequence of the amino acids. That's going to be key. The sequence of the amino acids is what gives each protein its unique function. Same is true with words. It's the sequence that matters. Consider this, the word dog, D-O-G. Something conjures to your mind. If you have a pet dog, you probably thought of that dog first. If you don't have a pet dog now, but you had one earlier in life, like me, you probably think of that dog. Maybe you're scared of dogs, and you think of a dog that terrorized you. But we all have a mental image that's conjured when we see the word dog. Then we see this word, God. Very different meaning. Very different things that are conjured in our minds. Still different between us, but each of us has a very, very different mental image when we consider the word God versus the word dog. But look at those two words. Same length, same characters, but the sequence is different. By changing nothing more than the sequence, by making the beginning the end and the end beginning, we have completely changed the meaning of the word and the image it conjures in our mind. 
and it's the same with proteins. By changing the sequence of amino acids, we can change the very protein we're considering. So here is an amino acid, a generic amino acid in its basic structure. Amino acids are made up of carboxy groups, that's what we see here, amino groups, that's what we see here, and each of these flank what is referred to as the alpha or central carbon. This is true of all amino acids. That alpha carbon is also bound to, as we see here, a proton. That's also true of all amino acids. And lastly, what we call a number of things. We sometimes call this the R group. Sometimes we refer to it as the variable group. But most oftenly, we call this the side chain of the amino acid. And this is what differs between all 20 of the amino acids that make up our proteins. It's what we find here that's different. All the rest is the same. So the 20 different amino acids are distinctly different because each of them have different side chains, nothing more. And here they are, in all their glory, the 20 amino acids that make life possible. We'll come back to them and characterize them in just a second, but it's important to see them. They all fit on one screen, they all fit on one page, there's only 20 of them, and you'll note that every single one of them has an amino group, a proton, a carboxy group, and an alpha carbon. That's the same in all 20. The only thing that's different is what we see on the side chain. We can have a side chain as simple as a single proton or as complicated as a charged pentagram ring. So it's the side chain that gives each amino acid its distinct identity, its biochemical properties. But before we go too much into that, let's go back to what the slide title says. Two-dimensional on the page, but three-dimensional in life. Amino acids exist in the real world, not on a computer screen, not on a textbook page. Amino acids take up three dimensions, height, width, and depth. And it's the three-dimensional shape of amino acids that gives them what's called their stereochemistry. Everything has a mirror image. Everything does. Don't believe me? Pick up anything and hold it in front of a mirror. And what you see in the mirror is that thing's mirror image. But where this idea gets distinct is that many times the mirror image of the item is superimposable to the original. Let's consider the letter A. Here on the left is letter A, and it is contemplating itself in the mirror. How handsome you are, letter A. And this is the letter A that it sees as its reflection. Let's spin both of those letter A's out towards us, and we'll see that if we try to superimpose them, they superimpose. They're symmetrical, and those two letter A's, the letter A itself and its mirror image, superimpose beautifully. Amino acids do not have this property. They are not superimposable mirror images. You can use your hands to demonstrate this. Go ahead and do it, as I say. Oh, got ahead of myself. Hold your two hands up side by side. Make them looking into the mirror so you want the palms facing. Thumbs pointing towards you, fingers straight up. If you think about it, your left hand is seeing its mirror image in your right hand. It's as though your left hand was in the mirror, and it's seeing your right hand as its reflection. Now, just as we did with the A's, turn your hands so that both palms are facing you. Now, your left thumb should be pointing off to the left, and your right thumb should be pointing off to the right. These are the mirror images of each other, right? That We just saw them facing each other. Now they're facing you. Superimpose them. Put one hand over the other, and tell me if they line up. Fingers don't line up so well. I've got a pinky sitting above my pointer finger. And the thumbs don't know what to do with themselves, do they? The thumbs are off to opposite sides. So your hands are non-superimposable mirror images. And the same is true of amino acids. We call molecules that have non-superimposable mirror images of themselves chiral. And we can use the rule of thumb that any time a carbon making its four bonds, is making those four bonds with four different chemical groups. It is, by definition, going to be chiral. It will be a non-superimposable mirror image. <coughs> Excuse me. The mirror images of these molecules are two very, very different, very distinct, with completely different biochemical properties, molecules. So we can see some examples of that. Here we have glyceraldehyde and alanine. Let's do the same trick. 
Let's make them mirror images. If you look at this, you'll see that they really are looking at each other in the mirror. The hydrogen is going into the board for both. The hydroxy group's coming out for us for glyceraldehyde. The hydrogen is going into the screen for us for alanine. The amino group is coming out. But if we try to superimpose them, it won't work because the hydrogen on the right of L-glyceraldehyde lines up with the hydroxyl group on the right for D-glyceraldehyde. They're not superimposable. Same is true of these two molecules. It works a little bit better. Let's put them in the mirror, take a good look, make sure that they're mirror images of each other, and indeed they are. Face them out to us, and we see that they are not superimposable in the least. We've got the oxygens coming off on different sides. We've got the constituent group on the bottom of the ring coming off on different sides. So what are these things? These are flavorant molecules. And in fact, the molecule on the left, on your tongue, tastes just like spearmint. While the molecule on the right tastes exactly like caraway seeds, like rye. Incredible that two so similar molecules could have such different chemical properties and have such different triggering tastes. This demonstrates to us that we now should understand two major points. Just because you're a mirror image doesn't mean you're the same as the molecule you see in the mirror. And related but distinct, when molecules are non-superimposable, mirror images, they can be very, very different molecules with very, very different properties. I like spearmint. I hate rye. Those are two distinct chemical properties. So let's circle back now to amino acids. All amino acids are chiral but one. Can you spot the chiral amino acid? Keep in mind, what rule of thumb do we use for recognizing chiral molecules? It involves carbon. And go ahead and see if you can spot the achiral, non-chiral amino acid. Go ahead and pause it if you need to, if you want more time. I'm going to answer the question in about one or two seconds. If you said glycine, you're right. Glycine is the only non-chiral um, amino acid. And that's because the alpha carbon of glycine is linked to two protons. The definition for our purposes for car chiral molecules is any molecule where the central carbon is bound to four different constituent groups. And that is true for all of these amino acids except glycine. In glycine, the central alpha carbon is bound to two separate hydrogens, making it uh, not chiral. So amino acids are also three-dimensional. They're not planar. In other words, they're not existing in two dimensions. They're existing in three. One of the best ways to draw an amino acid is this, a projection diagram. In these diagrams, the side chain here is coming out towards you. That's what this solid wedge is meant to demonstrate, while the proton is going deeper into the screen away from you. These solid lines here are showing that these two are in the plane of the alpha carbon. So all of these are in the same two-dimensional plane, but the side chain is coming out at us and the proton is going back away from us. This is um, alanine, the simplest amino acid alanine. We can see again a projection diagram. In this case, the amino group and the proton are coming out towards us. The carboxy group and the side chain, a methyl group, is going deeper away from us. The central alpha carbon would be right here in the center. It's not shown. Because these are chiral and these are not superimposable mirror images, we designate the two different mirror image forms so that we can refer to them, one versus the other. And we use the terms L and D. L, you might have learned in chemistry, is a left-handed chiral molecule, and D is right-handed. Amazingly, our proteins only use L-form amino acids. L-form amino acids are the only ones used in living um, cells in this planet. So hopefully now we have a better understanding of the basic structure of amino acids, four constituent groups, amino groups, carboxy groups, free protons, and the variable group. And we understand a little bit about the three-dimensional organization and the chirality of amino acids. So let's start to talk about amino acids individually instead of the characteristics that they share as a group. Just like each individual letter brings something different to the word it is part of, a hard sound, a soft sound, a vowel sound, each individual amino acid also brings something different biochemically to the protein it's part of. We'll go into that in some detail and talk about the biochemical properties of amino acids in the next chunk of this lecture. But for now, please keep in mind that we talked about proteins being chains of amino acids, 
Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. There are 20 naturally occurring amino acids that make up proteins. Amino acids, all amino acids, are made up of carboxy groups, amino groups, variable side chains, and a hydrogen, and all of those are bound to the alpha carbon. All amino acids are chiral but one, and we mean that all amino acids have L and D non-superimposable mirror image forms except one, and that one is, of course, glycine. Proteins themselves only contain L-form amino acids. D-form amino acids are found naturally, but they don't incorporate into proteins. We'll pick up from there when we go on to the B section of this lecture. We'll talk much more in depth about the biochemical properties of amino acids then. Until then, thanks for watching.